Recently, a panel of leading occupational therapists joined together to provide answers to common questions about sensory issues in young children. Here's what they had to say. Occupational therapy is a profession that's concerned with how people do activities. And the term occupation means activity, but it's the kind of activities that have meaning and, and purpose in people's lives. And for children, that is the things that they need and want to do on a daily basis, including learning how to play with others and communicate and be part of their family. The goal of therapy is for the child to be able to do the things that kids do so that they can dress themselves independently, that they can enjoy a birthday party, that they can learn how to ride a bike, that they'll have friends, that they can learn the, in the classroom the, the tasks that they need to learn in the classroom. Occupational therapists are well trained in developmental assessments. So when children are showing sensory seeking or sensory avoiding behaviors that seem outside of the range of typical, it's a good reason to seek out an occupational therapy assessment. I tested a little guy this week and he's a very bright boy and he's in a typical classroom, general ed classroom, and his parents were very concerned because he was just too vigorous in his play. The child I, I recently saw uh, came to occupational therapy primarily because he was having difficulties with eye contact. Another concern that was really um, problematic for him was he was um, clumsy, very clumsy, and uh, having difficulty really uh, performing writing activities in the classroom. The child can be fearful of being touched or avoid being touched or not like sounds. A child might have trouble doing things like being able to balance on one foot to kick a soccer ball. Or they might have trouble also coordinating the two sides of their body together, so to bring their two arms together to cut with scissors might be more difficult. Sometimes children have difficulty. The teacher says, go to your desk and we're about to do a table activity. It might be very difficult for that child then to be able to navigate through the room. To remember before they sat down, they were supposed to get their pen and paper out from the little cubicle, take it to the desk, then sit down. And it's all those steps and sequencing them in the correct order could be overwhelming for a child that's having difficulty with this. I often feel like these children come to us a little bit sad sometimes in regards to how how much they're enjoying their life and participating. For the children who uh, come to occupational therapy utilizing a sensory integrative approach, we really have to almost uh, sometimes slow the world down a little bit, right? And what we believe we're doing um, by allowing uh, the swing to move a little slower is allowing them the chance to uh, catch themselves and balance uh, where they might in the world around them fall off the swing. Setting up an environment in which the child is learning in a very fun way about their body, their body scheme, how to act on the environment and also to be successful and enjoy both staying still and moving and engaging in play. And there's a lot of fun equipment and it's by design. We use the trapeze quite a bit so as they're moving through space, they have the sense of their body weight while they're getting the proprioceptive input. One of the other things we might do with a child is to build an obstacle course. So the child has to climb over and under and through. Again, they're moving their body through space. They're needing to figure out where their body is. Or it would be immersing themselves in the ball pit or the bean pool so they have a better sense of themselves. What's happening on the frog swing is when the child's in prone and they're, they're jumping like a frog is they're getting a lot of input into their vestibular system, that movement sense. Well, one of the benefits of this therapy is its generalizability. So even though children are maybe playing on a trapeze and hitting a target, those skills do generalize then when the child goes to the classroom or the playground and plays on the monkey bars or copies from the blackboard. And the research does indicate that providing these additional sensory experiences are related to changes in behavior and motor skill and social development and, mo and emotional development. For parents who are seeking an evaluation uh, from an occupational therapist that emphasizes sensory integration, there are uh, some tools that they should ask if the therapist is using. Those assessments may include developmental assessments indicating some issue in a specific developmental area such as language, communication, adaptive skills, 
The most common evaluation that's used is called the Sensory Integration and Praxis Tests, or, or the SIPT. And it's a group of tests that look really closely at all the different sensory systems and help to kind of tease out where the areas of concern might be and also help to show where the areas of strength are for the child. The goal of therapy is to make functional gains in each child's life. What this translates to is improved confidence, self-esteem, and ability to play with other peers. These are the areas that all families want to excel in. The sooner you start therapy, the faster that gains can be made. However, it's never too late. For more information, resources, and videos about sensory motor issues and other topics, please visit pathways.org or call 1-800-955-CHILD.